Okay, so we are Team Three Toed Sloth. Um, I'm Jake Lewis, and then we have Chris Edwards and Alex Fisher. Um, yes, I believe so. Um, we built a, a snowmelt app. So our problem statement was uh, we wanted to generate an estimate of the annual snowmelt runoff uh, in a given watershed. Um, our problem statement kind of changed from what we initially said just because of available data. Um, initially, we wanted more of a forecast. Unfortunately, we were unable to find forecasted snow data. Um, they pretty much only have historical. So for our, our initial um, estimate, we used the 2018 water year, so October uh, 2017 to September 2018. And we focused mainly on the Wasatch Mountain areas um, just because of the abundance of ski resorts and, and other things in the area. We had three main data sources. Um, the first was the NLDAS uh, land surface model. This is where we got our, our snowmelt data raster. Um, we also used the NRCS um, Utah eight digit watersheds to um, speed up our geoprocessing time and, and limit our area of interest. And then we used a 30 meter DEM. Um, we used the 30 meter just to, again, kind of try to speed up the process when you're actually running the geoprocessing tool. Okay, so how our app works is the user chooses a point on the map that is the outlet of the watershed, and then watershed corresponding to that point is delineated, and then using zonal statistics, the average snow melt is calculated over that area, and then multiplying that average depth by the area of the watershed gives us a volume of snow melt. This is our GIS model. Um, we had some problems with the zonal statistics, so a lot of that is a workaround. Um, but initially it takes the point and then feeds it to the watershed tool, creates a boundary. And then we feed it this snowmelt raster, it runs zonal statistics and puts that value into a table. And then that is joined to the shape file that has the watershed boundary with the attribute. And so we have the area and the average depth as an attribute in the shape file that we were able to extract uh, in the app. So this just gives you a summary of all the data services we used in our app. Um, we have the snowmelt raster, as well as all the watersheds that we included. We uh, limited our boundaries to a certain number of watersheds because it makes it run really, really slow, the more watersheds you add to it. Um, and then we have a stream raster on there as well to uh, aid in the watershed delineation. And we found some uh, hard technical difficulties in ours, particularly using zone statistics in our first model. It, for whatever reason, it just would not work with uh, geoprocessing. And so we had to do a workaround, as Chris was explaining, and making it a little more complicated. Um, also, we had to change our scope to um, just 2018. Um, and we were very ambitious in the beginning. We just had to scale some things down. But yeah. Um, so we did have a couple ideas of things that we could do uh, to improve this in the future. To begin, we would look at including more um, water years. NLDAS has data back to 1979. Um, and so we we're thinking that as, as you go back farther, you could turn this into an estimate tool um, just by having a historical graph of what the snowmelt has typically been. And then just projecting and looking at current estimates and, and see if you're on track or not. Um, and we also looked at um, including more watersheds through Utah. Like Alex was saying, it, it was just a question of how fast the tool would run. Um, and so we would look at possibly including more watersheds and, and focusing it on different areas. Alrighty, and here you have our beautiful app. As you can see, the weather is currently snowy on our homepage. Um, and if you are not aware how snow melts, we have an instructional video up there at the bottom to aid you. Um, thank you. So this gives you a summary, basically overview of our app and just some details. Uh, we added two modal buttons up there. There's the help button, which gives you an overview and instructional, basically rundown of how to run the app. Uh, we also add an information button that includes all our data um, and sources and links if you're interested, as well as an inspirational photo.
Okay, so then um, on the map page, it brings us to our area of interest and it will show the boundary. If you click um, outside the boundary, you don't need to do it, but if you click outside, it brings up an error message and asks you to refresh the page and start again. And also if you click on the delineate button without selecting a point, it will give you an error. So you zoom in and click on a point. It works best if you click on the stream raster because then the watersheds are bigger. If you click other places, it's small. And then because of the coarse resolution of the land surface model, the, the number's not as good. Um, it takes a few minutes to load. And this we found with a larger domain, the flow direction raster was larger. And so this is what's kind of bogging it down. So we chose this length, this size of area. Um, once it it's done, it'll draw the watershed boundary. Pan over, and then over on the left, it gives you the results: um, the watershed area, the average depth of snow melt, and then multiplying those and doing a unit conversion, it gives you the estimated volume, the approximate volume in acre feet for that water year. And you can also view the actual snowmelt raster that we're calculating the average depths from. And then we have a summary of our proposal and mock-ups. Thank you.